My name is Ryan Lane. I am the chairperson currently for the Historic Preservation Commission. I've done that uh, since this past summer. Uh, before then, I was just a member uh, of the commission or the previous commissioner. Uh, my credentials really are in education, so uh, historic preservation is not something uh, that I had done educationally, but uh, really passionate about Cape's historic structures and the history it has to go along with that. And so that's why I joined originally. As far as what we do, you know, it's it's a lot of things that I think probably people wouldn't realize is going on behind the scenes. Most common thing we do is uh, we have what's called a, a certificate of appropriateness that is applied for. So if you're in a historic neighborhood or a historic district or the building itself is a national or state or city landmark, to do any significant alterations to the building, demolition to a building, um, anything along those lines, the approval actually has to come through our commission. So you come in with a building permit and a plan and then we can make adjustments that need to be done to preserve the historic architecture or even in a historic district like the Boulevard District, if you want to put in a certain type of fence, you have to get approval for that fence to match what the neighborhood's designation is. Um, and so that's what we do most commonly, but we have a lot of other things we do. We, we have a uh, master preservation plan that we uh, keep kind of behind the scenes and on the city's website. Uh, we work with uh, doing the historic surveys with the Historic Preservation Department at the University and Dr. Hoffman's classes. We're revamping uh, our original treasures program. So six times a year we'll be recognizing people who have upkept something that's an original treasure of Cape, something, a building, whether it's commercial, industrial, or residential, uh, that is important to the history of Cape and, and they've done a really well job preserving it. So we're gonna recognize that six times per year. We advise and help create national register nominations for specific buildings. We do a lot of things kind of behind the scenes. We have quite a few buildings that are on the National Historic Register and it is on the city's website, all the both local and national landmarks that we have. But there's, there's quite a few buildings that are, that are on there. The Reynolds House over by the casino uh, that's been beautifully renovated as an event space uh, and museum. The Glen House is on there up on by the River Campus on Loomer. The seminary building itself on the River Campus. Of course, the El Common Pleas Courthouse is on there. You have the uh, entire federal courthouse district, which we're in right now here on Lorimer. So there's quite a few buildings that are on the National Historic Register. So I was drawn to the, the Historic Preservation Commission itself because I just finished working on a project on a historic building in Cape and I had gone through some of the frustrations you can have while working on a historic building and I felt like I could help educate people who were going through that process and then also you know, give advice to people on what maybe they could do to expedite their process with the city through my experiences. And so, and, and tell them that it is still worth it, even though it's a little bit harder uh, to, to rebuild a historic property. Uh, it's worth it because at the end of the day, you've saved something that would probably disappear otherwise. Every municipality that has a historic area, including Cape, especially Cape, needs a historic preservation commission that works coincidental with the city. And the reason is, a lot of the times, people will look at progress as new buildings, more buildings and larger populations, but they don't always think about what they'll lose by tearing down a building, by neglecting properties in a certain area because they take a little bit more work because the renovations may be just as, if not more expensive than building new. But what you lose is you lose, you know, the actual physical history of the city and you're left with photos and stories, but you don't have the physical history. And so the Preservation Commission is really important for anybody who's utilizing our historic districts for tourism and for commercial entities, small business growth. Um, you'll find the vast majority of our small businesses in Cape are desire to be in our historic downtown commercial district. That's something that brings people into Cape and it improves not just our overall economy, but it also significantly can draw people to want to come back to the area, stay in the area and things like that. And people who are visiting to town, the first place you're going to go is our downtown area. And it's going to attract, you know, more and more young people to stay in our area, which is super important for growth and, and uh, for the city's health. So. We are the first step underneath the city to preserving those things that are important uh, for the city's future and growth, but also in remembering its past and, and kind of where it came from.
We need strong applicants for the Historic Preservation Commission, but the city as a whole needs strong applicants for all of their boards. The city boards are incredibly important for an advisory, whether it's Parks and Rec, or it's Historic Preservation Commission, or it's library, or it's planning and zoning. We need a diverse set of opinions with a diverse set of people in all of our boards from all sorts of backgrounds. If you have a monopoly of ideas, you usually don't find a whole lot of progress coming through our city. So for our city to flourish, we need strong applicants of differing backgrounds uh, on our board and on all boards so that we can have all those sets of opinions come together and find the best solutions for our city to grow for a lot of years to come.